if you're younger than me, and by that I mean, well, in your 20s or 30s or even 40s, you probably know this car. It's the BMW M6, and it is one of BMW's flagship. 560 horsepower, two turbos. And more electronics than the space shuttle. At least that's how it feels driving it. But come with me. Over here, this car may look familiar to you. This is one of the first M6s that was brought to America. This is a 1988 BMW M6. And they may look alike but technologically they're worlds apart. And if you follow me over here, this is even cooler. This is the European BMW M6 1984, the very first one that started this whole generation of cars. And coming up next on the Fast Lane Car, we're gonna learn about all three cars by talking with the owners. This is a uh, gray spec car. A lot of guys who were in the military uh, during the Cold War fell in love with these cars in Germany, so they tried to bring them back, and that was through the gray market. And this is a 1984. A service guy had brought it back and then sold it to a surgeon in Wichita, and it had sat in his hangar for about 15 years, and I uh, found it. So it's a hangar find. It is. All right, how many miles? This has about 83 on it right now. All right, that's still 83,000. Pretty uh, incredible. And tell me, do you know the difference between this one and the American spec version that's next to us? Well, with the European spec, uh, they call this the, the dirty motor. It doesn't have the emission control standards. Yep. So it's a little higher compression, a little higher output, about 286 horsepower at the crank. <laughs> And is that what you wanted? I mean, did you specifically go look for that one, or did this one just kind of fall in your lap? I did. This is, uh, I think of them as sisters. The black car is the, the well-heeled, um, very polite sister, and this is kind of the, <laughs> the bulkier, more brutish sister. What makes this car special? Why did you want an M6? I love what she does to my eyes. <laughs> All right, explain that. I, I, uh, my wife constantly, if she can't find me in the house, she knows I'm in the garage ogling my, my girlfriend, my Sancha, she calls her. It's, it's a beautiful car. I think they got it all right. So that's telling you that everything's working, right? That's this uh, warning system check thing. So your uh, Brandenslicht <laughs> is not working. Is that what the well, problem is? that's the brake light. Yeah. Uh, it's a brake. Okay. There we go. So now it's working. Yeah, the HAL 2000 is in order. <laughs> the Waschwasser is pretty cool. The Rucklicht. Backup light, oil yeah. pressure. Yeah, everything. And it had ABS. Cool. Uh, last question. Um, out of these three, yes. <laughs> it, it, you know, if I said you can take one home, which one would you take home? Mine. All right, fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So it was on the, on the hunt for this particular year, 1988, it uh, took me about four or five years to find one that was low mileage, um, you know, one of the few color combinations that I wanted. Uh, looked across the U.S. and it actually turned up right under my nose here in Denver. So uh, I, I really feel fortunate to, to found it. All right, what's so special about the M6? Why did you want this car? Well, the M6, I think what really drew me, uh, first it was just the design of the car, the E24 6 Series the classic coupe styling, the, the shark nose profile of the front, and you take that, and the ultimate iteration of that was the M package in that first generation. So that brings the high-performance engine, the M-Tech suspension, 
and all of those sort of nuances that the M division put into these cars. So to me, this is kind of the pinnacle of the E24 6 Series. And uh, how many horsepower? Or, you know, that one over there has 560. How about this one? Yeah, maybe half of that. So I'm <laughs> factory rated 256 horsepower. It's an inline 6 24 valve that in its day was considered uh, an overwhelming amount of horsepower, not so much by today's standards. <laughs> Give it a little juice. Uh, all right, I got bad news for you. Your friend's is uh, a little bit more uh, raspy. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, German mine's, version. Mine's more authentic to uh, the OEM spirit. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so more original, more raspy. Yeah. Both are good. <laughs> you said low miles. How many you got on there? Uh, the car just turned over 50,000 miles. That uh, is low. When I got it five years ago, it had 43,000. And uh, obviously you've driven a lot of cars. What's special about this when you drive it? Tell me about the driving dynamics. I think one of the reasons I, I'm attracted to the cars of this era is they have uh, a lot of the great mechanical performance. Um, you know, you can really feel the car when you're driving it. Um, it doesn't have that sort of synthetic computerized feeling to the suspension and the steering. You know, you know you're driving this cars and that's part of the personality and the appeal. All right, this is an identical interior to the German one. It doesn't have the radio that gives you that weather band that the German car had. And of course, it has the same monitor, except in English this time, so you can see brake light right there. And uh, how about speed-wise? This was obviously the king of the Autobahn back in the 80s. Uh, you know, today when you compare it to a car with 560 horsepower, it doesn't seem like that, but it's a much more honest driving experience. So do you still enjoy that? I mean, does it still put a smile on your face? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the advances in technology and horsepower are wonderful, and uh, all of us enthusiasts like that. But, you know, for its era and for the package that it is, I think uh, the, the tech specs sort of fade away. This is a great car to get in and cruise, and when you're out there and the windows are down on a nice day, it, it, nothing else matters. Great. Thank you very much. That is an impressive toolkit. What did you say? Everybody should what? Everybody should be able to fix one of these fine cars, the tools <laughs> they have lying around on the side of the road. Yeah, even a 20-year-old fuel-injected M-powered engine probably needs a bit more tools. Not, not that a vintage car would ever have an issue. <laughs>